fitting the buttstock to your shoulder. Or maybe a better way is to ask a question and say, why are buttstocks so important? So what we're gonna talk about is the different types of buttstocks and why we ask that question, right? So why are buttstocks so important and how do we fit into our shoulder? But also the placement, the different types of buttstocks and then how these affect recoil. So before we do that, first let's go into why. Why is probably the most important part because we don't know why, then we don't know why we're doing something, right? We all kind of need that. So to look at this, butt stocks are all different. And a lot of people will ask, whether it's in a class or you ask your friends or they ask online or whatever, they'll say, hey, I got a new rifle. What should I get for it? I'm like, I don't know, bro, get whatever you want. They're like, well, what's the most important thing? Well, first of all, do you have an optic, right? Whether it's a red dot or, you know, an LPVO or one to six or something like that. And it's like, yeah, I got that. All right, next thing, buttstock. Buttstock is one of the most important things to me. Reason is, is because this is the single point of contact that's gonna manage recoil with your body. This is the first point of contact, the one that makes, is the most important, right? And we know that majority of our recoil management comes from how this buttstock mates up with our shoulder. And it's something that's kind of overlooked. So to understand that, then we have to look at the different types of buttstocks. You have different shapes. Most common is probably just flat. Right, that buttstock's flat, straight up and down, maybe with a slight angle to it, just a little bit. So all buttstocks are made differently, and they're made differently for different types, their body types. So some are flat, some are kind of like curved in, right, or concave. Some are kind of, and actually some are kind of curved out or convex, right? So we've got flat, we've got one that's just a little bit curved in, but we're not even gonna show you the ones that are curved out. I think that's a waste of money. I don't know why they made it. I'm sure they have a good reason for certain body types and things like that. But honestly, it exaggerates recoil more and it makes it harder. So looking at these, let's talk about flat first. This is the one that we like. Flat is the one you see most common. And here we got a B5 system. I think it's the Bravo. Uh, stock that they got. It's pretty much flat with just a very slight cant in. So why do they put these cants in there? Well, this is my guess. I think it's because mostly your chest kind of grows, it goes down, it gets a little bit bigger, right? So you look at the shoulder and there's a slight angle to people's chest. It's not perfectly flat. So I think that's why they do it. And that makes a lot of sense to me. So between that and the BCM, those are kind of the two that I like the most. Either of these work great, right? BCM makes great products, right? B5 makes great products. So here we got it on our ripcord rifle and on the BCM, we have it on our BCM. The second type of buttstock that's pretty common is gonna be the one that curves in slightly. And you can see on this Magpul CTR, it's real subtle. It looks like it's just kind of angled, but there's just a very slight curve. And some are even more pronounced that you'll see out there. So this is a real slight example, but some are even more pronounced. So why would they design a curved one? Well, that curved one is kind of to fit in your shoulder pocket, right? Or what people think the shoulder pocket is. Basically, it's made to cup your shoulder in a cup right here. So if you do that, it's gonna cup the shoulder and it's gonna distribute that a little bit more evenly. The downside is the rifle is gonna sit a little bit lower because of it. Now with these flat butt stocks, you can allow it to sit a little bit higher, right? You can move it up slightly because it's flat, kind of get on the bottom. But with the curved one, it's gonna sit a little bit lower into your shoulder. So understanding the difference there, pretty important. Then they have add-ons, you've got rubber pads and you can adjust the thickness of that and everything else. For our purposes, me, Personal, flat butt stock. Some people really, really like these, right? But it's gonna change the way you shoot. It's also gonna change the way you see the optic because now the, op the gun comes down a little bit. You have to drop your head a little bit more, get more on it. The downside with these is, is as you start moving it up, it's gonna kick off a little bit higher just because of how the butt stock's shaped. And again, it's all dependent on your body type. So not everybody's built like me, not everybody's built like Tom behind the camera, and not everybody's, you know, six foot seven. It doesn't matter what butt stock they got, right? Like my buddy Derling down in Arizona. That dude, <laughs> he could shoot without a butt stock and his recoil would be just fine, right? But for us, it's gonna depend. So what I suggest you do is you try the different ones out. Fair enough. So now we're gonna talk real quick about placement. So earlier we talked about why a buttstock's important. And we mentioned that this is the first and most important contact point with your body. So why is that? Well, if you are framing through the rifle and pressing through the back of the buttstock, this will do the most of the work for you. And what I mean is, yes, your shoulder's the one doing it, but this contact point is super important. So that would probably mean that the shape of the buttstock matters, right, and where you have it placed. So now we're gonna talk about placement for a second. So placement, first thing we need to understand is that your shoulder pocket, a lot of people think that it's straight up and down. When they have this rifle, they put the rifle out and they keep it straight up and down like this, 
and they do all this stuff, right? And they can't their head. Well, your shoulder is not, your shoulder pocket's not straight up and down because that's not how the chest, this muscle here, your pec, connects underneath the, the uh, delt right here. And if you look, if I kind of pull that shirt down, you can kind of see where you used to have shoulder surgery, there's an angle right there. That's your shoulder pocket. So technically your shoulder pocket is curved a little bit, right? And it angles around like this. So makes sense, just can't your rifle, first of all. A lot of people will say, well, that's gonna change, but no, it's not, it's fine, trust me, you're, you're good. Like maybe 200 meters or a few hundred meters or something, yes, it can affect it slightly, but that little bit ain't gonna affect much, man. You're looking about like half an inch, inch most. So I would take that. So we're just gonna can it a little bit too. Well, what that does also is that when you can it, we see people, they get up on the rifle like this and they start putting their head down to the side. Well, if I just pick my head up and I can't the rifle over slightly, I can keep my head up, eyes up, gun up, and now I can frame through the back of the rifle. Now I have a lot more comfortable position. I move the sight to my eyes. Now everything's lined up just where I want. So that's gonna help us out a lot too. And another thing, if you shoot and your recoil goes up into the right just a little bit, well, guess what? If you just can't that gun, you're just gonna cheat it over so it's straight up and down. Now you have that repeatable process, predictable results. So we understand the shoulder and that it's not exactly straight up and down. If I want it to fit flat in the shoulder, I just camp my rifle, goes right along that line, we're good to go. So now the question is how high up or lower, how, how up or down do we move it, right? High or low? So traditionally, we know that the gun, the, the best part about an AR is it operates in a straight line. It's not like an AK. So everything moves and the round goes off, boom, round travels down, gas comes back up through the tube, pushes your bolt which unlocks back straight down this buffer tube and buffer and everything and then back forwards so if i have pressure below the gun's going to kick up a little bit but the more i get the pressure in line with this right here the better it's going to be for me as long as i have like somewhere around here i'm good to go i don't need to be like completely on the top of it right but with a flat buttstock i find i can get myself just a little bit lower on it and feel comfortable so i can get to here and feel that that buffer tube that point right there on the buttstock where the buffer tube's at is just a little bit above my shoulder and i can shoot just fine and get a good result for recoil so it's kind of the advantage of the flat one but with those curved ones you're going to go down a little bit right you're going to have to to fill the space in that buttstock and that's fine if that's the way you like to shoot but if you want to be a little bit more head up eyes up gun up that's where we're at so you can easily move the buttstock down and then the more in line with this you get obviously the more you're gonna be able to manage recoil. But sometimes we sacrifice just a little bit. No big deal, okay? For me, it's a little bit more about comfort or it's a balance between comfort and getting the right result out of target. So here, up, I'm gonna press through the back of the gun and I know that I can pretty much hold the gun like this and it's gonna operate and come right back onto target, which we're gonna show you here in a minute. So placement. The next part's gonna be inside or outside. How far in or out do I move the buttstock or where do I sit it at? What we don't want to do is be teetering on the tip of the shoulder. And the reason, one of the reasons we say kind of can't the gun is that it fits and puts even pressure around the back of the buttstock. So if I'm here, right, and I put it on the outside of my shoulder, what tends to happen is we put more pressure on the inside of the buttstock and then when it goes off, the gun kicks out to the right and comes back. So what they would say is, move your gun inwards a little bit more so your shoulder wraps around the buttstock. It's an easy fix right there. And some people, I've, I've literally seen people teach people to shoot and they move the buttstock as close to that center line in their chest as they can. No big deal, man. Just find a comfortable point in your shoulder, in your pocket, and that should do all the work for you. I want it to be a good flat wide shoulder for the gun to operate off of. I don't like it too far in. I like it just where it's supposed to be. Again, personal preference. So we look at this. Now we gotta throw on some kit. And let's talk about what happens if we're wearing kit and how does that affect where we put the buttstock. All right, so now we got our kit on, right? So now we're gonna talk about how do we place the buttstock when we're wearing kit. And this is something that just really messes with a lot of people. And it can depend on a lot of, a lot of it depends on the straps you have too. These are nice and slim, easy to use. This is a spirit of system, right? I really like their stuff. Cry makes good stuff too. A lot of people make good things, but I like this one a lot. It's pretty comfortable. But if you're not that fortunate and you are a law enforcement officer and you're running that kit from like 1999 or 1998 where it's like three inches thick and they decided the, the thicker the better it's like bro one of all first of all they're screwing you that's terrible but second of all you just got what you got man right you got to figure it out so a lot of people they try and put this buttstock on the outside of the shoulder and depending on your frame 
depending on how your, your shoulder straps are, a lot of them angle outwards like this, which is no good. You want them inside more because then it puts a lot of stress on the shoulders. A lot of people, those straps are angled out. So what do they do? They put the buttstock on the outside of the strap and then it just teeters here on the edge of the shoulder or even on the outside of the shoulder. They feel like it's on their arm or something weird and they start blading off more. What happens? They start to blade more and they reduce, 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 reduce the amount of contact point they're going to have. So first of all, stay more squared up to your target, right? Frame through the back of the gun, square up to the target and allow you to have a wide shoulder. But second of all, just like we said, camp the gun, a lot of people will take this and they'll try and put it right on top of the strap. Depending on the size of the strap, that can kind of mess you up. So what I do is I split the strap. And I find when I just split the strap with the buttstock, that makes everything a lot easier. Now I don't find that buttstock teetering off or doing this other stuff. So when people try to go outside of the buttstock, now you can see that's farther out than I'm used to. It's on the, on the very front of the shoulder and we start shooting and what happens? This. And as this shoulder starts to forget to do its job and starts to sink back with little bits of recoil that add up after so many rounds, guess what happens? We start blading off more and more and canting our head. Then we start turning to the side and recoil goes more and more and more out to the right. If you're a right-handed shooter, if you're a left-handed shooter, well, it goes out that way. So easy fix, cant the gun, a common theme here, cant your gun, and just put it over the, the strap like that. And now we can shoot nice and easy. So fine if you just split the strap with your buttstock, that should help you out a lot. It's also dependent on the size of the straps. It's also dependent on the buttstock you have and your body type. Everything's dependent, right? Met T dependent, whatever you want to call it. Situation dependent, everything adds up to little changes. So find what works for you, but for a lot of people, this seems to work best. So let's take this off, let's get back at it, and let's find out what recoil actually, or excuse me, how the buttstock actually does affect recoil. Quick question. Can you cant the rifle if you have an L LPVO? Ooh, good question. No, just kidding. Of course you can. You can cant anything, right? I don't know. Yeah, you can cant the, I do. Is that the, I feel like this is a trick question, Tom. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about recoil and what the buttstock can do to recoil. More importantly, what you can do to affect recoil through your buttstock. So how this is gonna work here in a second is I'm gonna take two shots and there's black pasters up there that are just a reference point for my sights. So I just wanna put my sight on the black paster. We know the rounds are gonna go below, but I'm gonna take a shot. We're gonna see where that second shot returns to. The goal is to get the, the red dot to return back onto the paster every time, right? And that'll mean our shots are pretty tight together. If I do it wrong, then that means the sight is not gonna return back to the black paster. So what a lot of people will say is as long as you have good posture, right? Or what we like to say is base frame touch. If I settle my base so I can frame through the back of the rifle and then I can touch the target correctly, right? And I can do that and I can get my sights to return back to the target. If I do that, then the round should come back to where they want. Again, this plays an important part because all of what you're doing should go through the back of the gun, through that buttstock, and then you should see have a good result. So a lot of people say, you know, grab onto the gun and pull back into your shoulder. No, don't, no, 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 no. I don't like doing that. Every time I did that, it affected my shot. Screw it, I'll show you here in a second. But I like to frame through the back of the gun because which way does recoil go? This way. So how do we kind of recoil? We go this way. So therefore press through the back of the gun instead of pulling in the direction you get recoil, right? That'll help mitigate that and that'll get you back on a target nice and easy. Let's go ahead and do it, right? So as you can see, the rifle we got, there's no compensator on here. This is not a muzzle break, none of that. Okay, so this is just a bird cage. And on our other rifle, it's just a four palm surefire. So both guns are cleared out, nothing on the gun, nothing comped. And part of it is gonna dictate how high the sight lifts and returns is gonna depend on how your gun is gassed, right? How it's sprung and other things like that. For the most part, there's nothing here helping out. Okay, just a normal rifle. So let me put my eyes on, get my ears in and we'll load up. All right, so first things first, law of primacy means the first thing you see is probably what you're gonna remember, right? So let's go ahead and do that. So you can tell I'm not really holding on to the rifle. All I'm gonna do is get a good frame, a flat wall for the gun to fire off of. I'm gonna put my sights generally on that black paster and I'm gonna take two shots. I'm gonna take the first shot and wherever the gun naturally settles to, I'm gonna take the second shot. Okay, stand by. 
Okay. Let's do that again. There we go. So first one up here that we shot, shot a little bit above right where I wanted to. My dot was around here and we got a spread of about an inch. The second one, I shot it again so we could actually get the sights on the paster because the first one I broke it high. I kind of forgot what we we're doing. Put the dot right here and our two shots were right there. I would say with doing not a whole lot, that gun pretty much came back to where I wanted it to go, wouldn't you? That's a pretty good spread for just barely holding onto the gun like this, real light up top, and just giving a good platform for the gun to fire off of. Now what we'll see is, so here, shot there, here, shot there. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna move over here to this paster. I'm gonna put my sight here, I'm gonna change the way I hold the rifle, put a little bit of pressure on the inside, and you'll see that second shot drift off to the right. So, same thing. This time, I'm gonna blade off a little bit more. I'm gonna put the rifle straight up and down, more like this, and we're gonna see what that does to my recoil, right? You see I don't have the pressure like we had. It's not canted, it's not completely flat on the back. Now we're gonna see that gun kick off to the right. So here, stand by. There we go. So this is the difference and how you put pressure on your buttstock, right? So the gun went off, so it was here, boom, came back, boom, and it was here. So it went from here to here, that was the difference in our sights, rounds impacted below. So instead of this spread, we should have this spread, or this spread, right? So if you do this, that's gonna be a big difference in the result you get on target, which hopefully that kind of explains why we said all that stuff before. So now let's just get some rapid, rapid fire shots in, and we'll go from there so you guys can kind of see it. All right. Stand by. Good. So we got a nice tight group. One went a little bit off to the left, but overall not bad. And we got all this right here. I'd say for that, I'll take it, right? So how many of y'all shoot and shoot and shoot and that gun just keeps drifting and drifting and drifting? Well, if you have this first, that'll fix a lot of it. Frame through the back of the gun, get pressure on the buttstock like it was designed to be done, and then you'll get that. So understanding that, now let's look at the curved buttstock, right? We'll see how they get a little bit lower on the gun to achieve the same result. Okay. So now we got the other buttstock, right? This one's got a little bit of that curve to it. So we're gonna use that third paster so you can see that. Now, all we're gonna do now, you can notice the other one, I felt a little bit more comfortable higher up. I'm not able to do that, so I just gotta sit it down a little bit lower in the shoulder and drop that head a little bit more, which is common. So let's look at that real quick. One, let's get a little bit lower on it first. See that one, stand by. Good. Get a little bit lower on it, does the same thing just like I want. But if I move this up a little bit higher, kind of like I did with the other one, we're gonna get some of this. There we go. So we got two little holes right there. So first one, they were stacked here. The second one, you can just barely see it hit that and then it spread off over there. So again, with that curved buttstock, it's a little bit lower in the shoulder. Let's look at that with a few more rounds, see how it works. Stand by. Good. And we get a pretty good result. Had one drift off just a little bit, but overall not too bad. All right. We'll take those groups. All right, guys. So now you kind of know what, how the butt stock's gonna affect your shooting, how it's gonna affect recoil. Again, everybody's different. So if it works for you, for the most part, if you just go with a flat butt stock, can it in a little bit, that tends to help most people. Kit. Oh, no, no, that was bad. That was better. <laughs>